First of all, it's great to be back uh, in Cathedral School, my alma mater. I have very fond memories of this place. Um, I think a lot of my passions, a lot of my creativity, a lot of what I did, uh, the foundation was set right here. Mrs. Isaacs was my English teacher, and she always told my parents on, uh, on open day that I was an outstanding student, standing out of the class, which is what you did. You threw me out. <laughs> um, but I think the world has changed since then. Where you are and where I am, what I saw growing up was very different. We had to actually go seek out information. You guys, just Google it, you know. Between all, all the mediums you have today on the internet, which is Instagram, I'm sure a lot of you all use it, Facebook, Twitter, you know, information is provided to you. Both the written word and the visual information that we see, pictures, images, every day. I mean, I think my, my, my first real image, uh, you know, on television was Amchi Mati, Amchi Mansa, this, this farming show that happened every day, and we watched it. Because that's, that was your visual input at that time. That's, that's, that's what you waited for. The world has changed today. But there's one commonality we both have. And that is a curiosity of mind. We want to learn. So I'm going to take you through a little journey, my own journey, uh, with nine images. My experiences through these images. June 1985. An image of this Afghan girl called Sharbat Gula. The photographer Steve Makari. I just finished my 12th Standard Cathedral, April 1985. And I was about to go to Stanford in September. And this is the one image which captured me forever. Here's a girl whose country is being bombed in Afghanistan. And there's fear, there's anxiety, there's a sense of uncertainty. That's exactly how I felt when I was going to Stanford. Um, yes, I know I had a great foundation in Cathedral, but there was this apprehension because I didn't know what, what I was going for. And, you know, I, I, I had no goal. Yes, I wanted to major in something. I'm not sure. You know, what's it going to be like? I, I never, never really lived in the U.S. in my life. But I think this was that one image which gripped me and in many ways made my world a world of art and imagery. And, 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 and through my life, I always picked out a few images which stuck with me and kind of helped me, reminded me of those experiences which really matter. And that's the sifting that you have to do even more today. Because your visual input is so great, and the choices you have are so great, that you have to choose those which are relevant to you. This is a painting by a very famous artist called Edward Munch. I'll tell you the year it was painted. It was painted in 1893. It's called The Scream. The Scream, in many ways, is that panic, that uncertainty, carrying on with the same theme of going to Stanford. But it's not masked. It's completely expressive. And, and, and interestingly, the painting itself is a painting of horror, a painting of um, angst, of grief. But this particular painting, actually, and, and, and Edward Munch started a whole movement of hope in the art world called Expressionism, which changed the way people actually painted, looked at things, so through this uncertainty came out one of the most creative movements of our time. This photo I love. It looks very simple. It's of a little boy called Harold Whittles, young boy. For the first time, he has this sense of awe and excitement, this wonder, because someone put a hearing aid into his ear. He was deaf. So the context of his world suddenly changed. You know, he, he had never heard a sound in his life. He had, he had no, no, no kind of connection with the, with the world of sound. And here's this little boy in awe and wonder. That's exactly what I felt when I went to Stanford. It was, it was that awe. I couldn't believe there's a university like this. I couldn't believe this is what education is all about. The resources, the access, the teaching. It was, it was, it was like a, a excitement. It was, it was revelation. It was wonder. And I look back and I said, you know, it's exactly these moments, these specific moments of experiences, this, this, that moment of awe and excitement, which recreates your thought process, recreates the way you think, and recreates the way you create. This is a painting by an artist called S.H. Raza, one of India's greatest artists. And, you know, I didn't realize the significance of this painting until I actually was, was thinking of what to say to you all. 
And it also showed me there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a subconscious connection with numbers which always stay with you. This painting has many quadrants. It has lots of color, it has lots of symbols, it has lots of ideas, but it is that sense of structure that creates the whole. It has 13 quadrants. And interestingly enough, you know, my birthday is also February 13th, so I realized that there was a uh, connection. In fact, this is a painting uh, Minal and I actually own. It's hanging in our house. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to skip from college and, and, and come to what we created, which is Saffron Art. We realized in the process of creation that unless you don't create structure within the creative process, in many ways it doesn't come together. You know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and that's exactly what this is. Of course, we all know who he is. Muhammad Ali. I put this up, and I, you know, it's a person I respected all my life. Not because he was a great boxer. That was one part. I think he was a great freedom fighter. He fought for rights, black rights, in the US. Uh, this is, of course, the photograph of uh, him knocking out Sonny Liston in the first round. But he, but he fought for what he thought he believed in. He was asked to go to the Vietnam War and fight for the United States. And he said, the Vietnamese are not my enemy. My enemy is within the US. I refuse to fight. They stripped, off, stripped him off his title. He wasn't allowed to fight. But he came back. He organized a boxing match in Africa, in Zaire. It was called Rumble in the Jungle, with George Foreman. And he knocked him out, and he won. But what he said is that, irrespective of how much you knock me down, I will come back, and I will succeed, and I will excel. And that message, his message of that fighting spirit, that courage, that sportsmanship is something that I've always, always kept in my life. Uh, we all know this image. This is the one indelible image that's been televised, broadcast, printed over and over again. September 11, 2001. We had, we had launched our first major, major exhibition in the United States in Los Angeles with two great artists who were living there with us for, uh, for one month, Francis Newton Souza and Baiju Parton. The show opened on September 8th. We all our hopes for banking on this one show for Saffron Art. And we turned on the television three days later after we opened the show and we saw this. It was, in, in some ways, it was that complete despair. I mean, not only because of what had happened, it's a, the tragedy of, and, you know, and, the, and the victims and, 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 and the whole act itself, but it's astonishing. But in some ways, our own little hopes with our own show were shattered because we knew it was over. And I remember Souza, who was from New York and had left a few days before this happened. Um, he, keep, he, he called Minal and me and said, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. I believe in you. I think you guys will recreate the way art is bought in India. And I think that, that those sense of hope and those, that, those, um, that sense of encouragement in these times of despair is one memory I will always, always have with me. Van Vincent Van Gogh, my favorite artist in the world. I think I've been to pretty much every exhibition. When I used to paint myself, and thank you for encouraging me, Mr. Isaac, when I was a child. Uh, this is, I, I, I painted Vincent's paintings over and over again, because I just love them. This particular painting called Sunflowers, which is a very famous painting in the world, was done for his, his friend, Paul Gauguin, who was also a painter. Um, he respected Paul Gauguin, you know, so to me this painting is a sign of friendship. And it's interesting because the painting has all the aspects that I would look at. It has bloom, withering, it has a brightness, it has everything that, that Van Gogh wanted to give to his, his mentor, his friend. And interestingly enough, he chose the sunflower or a bouquet of sunflowers to express all those emotions. And sunflowers are one of the few flowers which actually turn towards the sun, like Vincent van Gogh was turning towards Paul Gauguin and his friendship. Friendship to me has been the most important thing, and my friends still today, many are sitting here in this room, uh, are from Cathedral. You know, this, this school set the foundation for, for many of the people who are still, still very, very close to me. And as you go forward in your life, don't forget all these friends that you made here. I don't know if you can see this very well. This is chosen by my daughter, who said you must put it in. She's sitting right there, also in cathedral. It's of this dog sitting by a grave, 
his master's grave where he sat for days and days and days after his, his, um, his master was killed in the landslides in Rio de Janeiro. <clears throat> Again, on the theme of friendship also comes loyalty. And I think to really understand loyalty, <clears throat> you have to first understand humility. That you can be in a place, sit in a place and, and, and wish and hope that, you will, that, that someone you long for would come back. To me, friendship and loyalty have been probably the two most important so-called adjectives I would use in my life. And it's something that I will always, always treasure with me forever. Before I come to the last image, like I said when we started, for me the world of images was much less. And the inputs that you have today and the relevance it has to you is very, very different. But sometimes an image can not only change the way you think, but can also change your entire circumstance in life. And I'm talking about that literally with this last image. This last image was a painting by India's greatest painter called M.F. Hussain. It's a painting called Bharat Mata. When I see this painting, what do I see? I see a sailboat showing a journey. I see a yogic thinking of meditation. I see the chakra, which is to me progress. I see the mountains, which is aspiration. I see the sun, which is hope. And I see the entire emotion encapsulated by a beautiful human form. That to me is this painting. This pa when, after this painting came out, a month later, we had one of our biggest auctions online on Saffron Art. I was driving to work in the morning. And there were 200 people outside my gallery with slogans, shouting, Dinesh Vajirani, Minal Vajirani, Murdabad, Safranad, Murdabad. I had people trying to run up to, to the gallery with black paint, which they wanted to throw on the painting. All the emotions that you had, fear, angst, uncertainty, all came rushing in at the same time. We went to the commissioner of police at that time, and said, sir, here is my, I told him, sir, here is my catalog. I need your help. And with due respect, by the afternoon, there were three armored jeeps in, in front of our gallery. There, was, there were, there were, there were law keepers around, around the space. No one was allowed to enter the gallery. Luckily, it was an online auction, so you don't have to be in a room. And the auction went on, and we completed it. In those two days, Hussein was in London at that time. And we were talking, and we kept going back and forth. And I, you know, he kept encouraging me. And I remember the last conversation I had with him. He said, Dinesh, himmat rakho. And that's exactly what I'm going to leave you with. Have courage and follow your passion. Thank you.